Hey everybody, welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew, and I'm joined by Martin. Good evening, Matt. How are you doing? I'm doing... Well, I'm using Windows, let's just put it that way. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's, it's, hor- it's horrible. Um, so I bought a uh, audio interface, it's a Scarlet Solo something or the other, in order to use... So about maybe five years ago, I bought this like four hundred dollar microphone. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I haven't been able to use it because I don't have like because it's like it only works with SL- XLR and stuff. So. Um, oh right. So I had to buy an audio inter- interface, and it doesn't work with Win- with Linux all that much. Um, so that's going to be something I'm going to be troubleshooting in the next week. Anyway, so uh, Martin, how are you doing this week? How- yeah, doing well, thanks, Matt. Um, how was your fa- Thanksgiving, by the way? It was different, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes, without all the family around, it was definitely different. But me, and my mom, and dad, we managed to, you know, we cooked a ham and just uh, had a little family get together. It was it was fine, you know, nothing normal. Um, you guys don't do? Do you guys do Thanksgiving in the UK? I don't even know. No, I didn't no, think we so. Don't. You guys are a bunch of thankless people over there, you know. <laughs> Obviously, I'm I'm kidding. UK people are they're they're just lovely people. <laughs> I, I I make fun of people. It's all right. No, we we make the big deal in Christmas. To be fair, and we ha- we have Easter as well. But, mm. Um, not really. We get together on main holidays, really. Christmas. Yeah, you guys, you guys are probably the smart ones. Canada does their Thanksgiving like a a. a month early which is confusing yeah i i i, I personally them. i think that they do it a month early just so that they can do christmas earlier than the rest of us but that's just my <laughs> so um what have you been doing on linux the because la- it's been a couple of weeks since we've record- been recording so um what have you been doing on linux lately yeah um not a great deal on linux um i was in the depths of ebay and i saw a couple of um Linux uh, format magazine, which I've uh, started my subscription when uh, back in March. It's a really good magazine. Um, tells you all the info that you actually need. No, no filler, and you get a, a DVD with it to try out. Quite archaic, but um, so I'd won 24 magazines off this guy. And it was eight pound postage and packaging, so he's combining them. Um, so I missed out on some other auctions. I it messaged him and um, sh- bring the story to a close. I've ended up with 82 issues and about 75 discs spanning tw- uh, 2010 to 2019. <laughs> oh, cool. So I've got a hell of a lot of reading, but it's a really good magazine. I, I think you can have it. Um, you can subscribe to it in the USA. Um, I think obviously you'll pay a, a, a fair bit of tax. Uh, but it's a really good magazine, covers everything. Um, Linux related, um, I've spun up Ferran OS to give that a look. Um, so far it's nice and clean distro, quite impressed. Uh, just need a bit more time to it to draw any conclusions, stroke, distro hop. Um, KDE desktop, like I said, nice clean interface. Um, yeah, quite happy. Maybe it will be a daily. I'm quite happy with KDE Neon, but yeah, I'm always looking to find the uh, the perfect one, but I'm more than happy with KDE Neon, to be fair. But um, yeah, just something different to look at. You know what we like. Is Farron based like. on Ubuntu? I think so, yes, for the KDE desktop. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, I've been, I used Ubuntu in like a virtual machine this last week, so you should be proud of me. Mm? <laughs> I, I missed the AUR immediately. <laughs> Did, did you? She went straight back onto the command line and dropped a few. Um, oh, like what's this, P, what's this PPA nonsense? It's horrible. And flat <laughs> like I was trying to install because I'm doing. I'm going to do a video about uh, um, note taking apps, and the one of them that I'm going to cover is um, Joplin, and it's broken on Arch. The Arch package it just won't launch, so I had to get mm. you know, sign into the groovy gorilla and install it through there it was and it was a snap package i mean, <laughs> it was like oh, it's, it's a snap <laughs> package I, I haven't used snap in ages it's so adorable um <laughs> so personally i've been messing around with a, a new window manager called dwm it's a uh, made by the suckless guys and it's um 
very very minimal out of the box and very very complicated it was a pain in the rear end to get set up um but i'm really very proud of how well i've done with it because it's i don't know any c programming language at all um and this is program this is all configured in c so i've done quite a bit of learning in c the last couple weeks um so okay, so that's kept you quite busy, yeah. Yeah, it has. Uh, it's nice because I like you know, I've pretty much stopped distro hopping, so I don't. I just stick on Arco or Arch. Um, but I like switching back and forth between the window managers because it gives me something new to to look at. So DB yeah. GWM is what I've been doing there, and then I've um, I've been trying to go browser agnostic with my uh, bookmarks, basically uh, to use either Rofi or d menu in order to like access like a bookmarks f file or whatever so i can when i switch between browsers i just have to you know press a key binding and do that and i finally found something oh, cool. called buku that basically has a d menu script where it will set, let me save all my bookmarks and stuff and then i can just you know press a key binding type in a few letters of whatever the title of the bookmark is and i can go there and it it will just open up in whatever default browser i have set at the time so I'm actually That's quite cool. proud of that as well. So I've been geeking out on stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, the only book like, book, bookmark of a because I use Firefox currently. Um, I've noticed if you right click on Firefox and click on Pin Tab, I've never ever pin tabs before. I always obviously keep my book box relatively um, tidy in in a decent order, but the Pin Tab option is quite good. Just um, puts it to sleep in the corner and just. Uh, show you any notifications if you've got any. Um, mm. So that's quite good just to leave it there, not really using a lot of um, memory or anything. But yeah, that's about the most I've done with uh, bookmarks recently. Yeah, I, I do some. I usually have like three pin, pinned. I always keep TweetDeck pinned over there second so I, I don't spend as much time on Twitter as I used to. Um, all right, anyways, so. Um, Let's go ahead and jump into the contact information. If you want to uh, give us a, uh, I was going to say give us a ring, but this isn't the 1990s where we use phones. Uh, if you, if you want to contact us or get a hold of us or follow us or whatever, you can do so at tw on Twitter. Uh, at the LinuxCast is the main email or main Twitter account. Um, basically, that just tweets out about new episodes. Every once in a while, I'll retweet something from you know, nine to five Linux or something. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at MTWB. Martin's Martin Twit to you. You can find these links in the show note. You can subscribe to all of our podcast feeds and such at the linuxcast.org. That just transfers you over to our anchor page. You can also contact, contact us via email if you're, you know, still use email. Uh, the linux.com, the, lin the linuxcast at gmail.com. And you can also like us on Facebook for people who use Facebook, facebook.com slash links. You know, I derided everybody who, who uses every platform in that. I was like, if you use Twitter, you can do this. I mean, who, who uses Twitter <laughs> anymore? If you want to use uh, email, I mean, come on, what are you, 50 years old? <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> if you want to subscribe to us on YouTube, you can also do that at, uh, at the link in the, sh the show notes. Um, we don't have a pretty URL for that yet because we don't have enough subscribers. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because I've been doing a, a – uh, a video every day we also post the podcast there almost immediately after we record it so um definitely a lot of good stuff there so uh the first things on the agenda are two are two news links that we send now i've um uh, in, interestingly enough i just made a video about my first one so martin why don't you, you do the um do yours first your first link yeah no problem um linux on apple m1 Let's face it, we all like um, the actual, whether you don't, uh, the Apple architecture and the, the smooth lines and, and the way they present battery life and things like that. But um, a guy called Hector Mar Martin, also known as Marcan, has recently um, launched a Patreon project to re reverse engineer the Apple M1 Mac to run on Linux natively. Now he's got a Patreon. He's got three pound five fifty and ten pound fifty a month. He wants to earn enough so he can do it as a full time job. Basically, he's currently sitting on nine hundred and sixty six patrons. So there's a lot of interest. Now I think the interest with this guy 
is mainly because of his history. Um, did you ever have a Nintendo Wii? Uh, yeah, for about maybe 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm one of those silly people who threw the... the oh, the thing, you know, I was playing the golf or something and ended up tossing the the controller and ended up breaking that, and I just never replaced it. So, yeah, yeah, well, these were, this guy actually worked on a um, jailbreak in the Wii um, and, and helping create the Homebrew channel, which was basically um, stick your ISOs on the drive and it reads them and plays them. He's also uh, put Linux on the uh, PS3. He's, he's done that on the slim and up-to-date PS3 units. He's also ported Linux onto the PS4. So this guy, if anyone's going to do it, this guy is. Um, so I think if anyone is interested, hop onto Patreon. I mean, I'll probably have the um, this Apple M1 in about, what, 12 years when I can actually afford it. <laughs> when but, you can buy it on eBay for really cheap, yeah. But yeah. It, it'll be absolutely, I mean, if you saw the reviews of it, I mean, it's it's just a, a gorgeous machine. Mm-hmm. Obviously not power hungry with the arm. Um, relative, uh, slightly cheaper than the usual uh, premium point, I think. Uh, still, still too high for me. But yeah, I just... I mean, the only Apple thing I've really got is uh, an iPad, but it, it's just, it, it's like Linux, it just works, doesn't it? It does the job, but mm-hmm. with Linux on this M1, it would just be phenomenal, I think. Yeah, it'd be cool. this... How about yourself? What, new, what news is intriguing you? All right, so uh, there's a new Ubuntu uh, remix out there called Ubuntu Web, and I just did a first look of it on a video actually yesterday on the podcast, and I actually didn't plan that. So I put this link in there, this link in your ages ago. Um, it's uh, it's supposed to be a Chrome OS thing, but based on Firefox. But um, I, I, I was reading. I really lambasted this in the video that I did yesterday. But I read afterwards that the developer's like <laughs> ten years old, so I feel really bad about it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, mean, I was like, this is <sighs> dumb. Why does this exist? Why is the developer wasting their time on this? It's really stupid. Um, and then, like I said, he's ten. Like, apparently, he's ten years old. I, mean, I read this on the internet. I have no clue if it's true or not. But I, like, I feel terrible. Um, I'm not taking the video down because everything I said is still true. But <laughs> yeah. Fair play uh, to the guy. Say it again, Martin. A uh, fair play to the guy. Yeah. Well, he's um, he uh, he's di- he's doing the he did the um, there's a um. What Unity version version that he's doing? He's doing something called the Unity Remix. Basically, it just uses a Unity Seven for Ubuntu. Um, so apparently he knows his stuff. But this this um, this web remix is basically just a GNOME version of Ubuntu with a, a GNOME with a couple extensions installed, and then a a whole bunch of um, like links to Firefox tabs that you have to sign into to some really shady weird e-cloud service um it's just it's really really weird um but i mean the idea behind it is cool i mean it would be kind of awesome to have like a really low powered version Mm -hmm. of linux that runs uh, on web technologies it's just firefox i mean firefox tried to do this with firefox os right um so it'd be cool to do that but that's not what really what this is so uh, it it was disappointing to me just a bit but then like i said the guy's 10 years old so maybe he'll do better i mean you gotta learn oh somewhere. gosh yeah great yeah. future definitely yeah I, I mean he already knows how to create a distro i don't know how to do that so <laughs> i mean i couldn't no. create an iso on my own if i had to right so that i would definitely be, uh, couldn't burn an iso back at, at the well, age of 10 put it that way <laughs> that's about as far as i could get to is just, <laughs> I, I could put on a usb but i couldn't actually create my own um anyways so uh, if if you're interested in it, you should. Uh, I got the links, both links to both of those things, in the show notes. So, moving on to our main topic now. Uh, when I was still doing this show solo, I did like five reasons why you should use Arch Linux. Um, and I got some comments on that, like you're you're such a Li- Arch fanboy, and uh, and I, I didn't have a good comeback for that because I am indeed an Arch fanboy. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Martin, you're 
like an Ubuntu only kind of guy, right? Like basically, your favorite distros tend to run be based on Ubuntu, yeah. Yeah, and Debian, really. Ubuntu and Debian, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm the opposite. I don't like Ubuntu at all. <laughs> so I thought that it would be interesting to talk a little bit about how um, the reputation of Arch is kind of transformed over the last four or five years into being something that, um, like, the whole, I, I use Arch Linux, by the way, you know, like, it's some kind of badge of honor to wear, because I know I'm guilty of it, because, like, like, I'm proud to use Arch Linux, and it's dumb to be proud of what distro you're using, because it's not as if you had any hand in making it, um, so, um, I had a couple of videos here that I, that I linked to, basically, it was just saying that, um, Luke's video is basically here's the reason why you should use Arch Linux, um, and I like I can't actually remember what the other uh, what the other video was because I like this has been ages ago. Um, oh, it, it was just one that I dropped in the notes. It was just uh, oh, yeah, see, Ar see Arch and Linux memes. <laughs> I mean, oh, there's a oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I should I definitely have to take a look at this. Wait, is it in the wiki? <laughs> All right, so I, I should probably yeah. not watch the video right in the middle of this, but that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I mean, I, as you, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I mean, as you say that you you didn't build Arch Linux, but essentially you do, don't you, really? Well, I mean, because it's so much harder to when you install Ubuntu or something that's based on Ubuntu, you get in there, you get the 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 Unity installer or whatever it's called, you know, yeah, and you go through. Yeah, you go through six steps. You know, you choose your, you know, and enter your password, and you're installed, right? It's not like that with Arch Linux. You have to jump through all these hoops. You have to use the TTY, you know, and yep. it's it's pretty complicated. A new user, unless they're really really good at following instructions and have used a t a TTY before in the in the past, probably can't do it. So it gives you the sense of pride that you you know you're you're at least smart enough to have installed arch linux and then you have to look and you find someone who's never installed arch linux and you have to look down on them because they're obviously so stupid they can't do it <laughs> i mean that's obviously the case right i mean it's just, it, it it's silly because that's not really the case but it's because i think it's because the um i mean if gen 2 was more popular you'd probably have this same kind of thing because you have to compile your own kernel and that's not something that a you know a noob could do um no, no so, <laughs> right so uh, that installation process i think is what has led to the entitlement of arch linux users for at least for the some you know in some ways yeah i mean i suppose the arch way i mean at the end of the day it's a hard way let's face it um, I suppose you you do get a better understanding exactly how Linux does work. I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, I just plug in the as you say, you just get whatever distro I want to run up. I don't have to type any con command lines or or things like that. But then again, you you get your system set up exactly how you want it. I mean, I've I've tried it before and I've just thought no, because it it literally is a hard way. I'll just find a nice release. That's not full of loads of packages. I'll never ever use it, and and just stick to that. So I mean, yeah, Arch users probably do look down on other users for not reading the FN manual and things like that. But it's going back to tribalism, isn't it? At the end of the day, I mean, everyone thinks their distro is better than someone else's mm -hmm. and recommends their distro. I, I don't particularly like the the fact that our tuners users will recommend Arch because I'm bloody I'm, I'd only ever recommend that to probably uh, well you you wouldn't re recommend it to anyone that's never used Linux at all. I mean if there was high up in IT and knew their stuff then then possibly if they knew bits and pieces and was quite happy to, on the command line. But, I'd agree. I'd agree with that for vanilla Arch, but I mean Arch-based distros maybe not so much because I, uh, I guess, yeah yeah Manjaro is you know kind of set up for New Year's, but even, but even then rolling distros in general kind of should sh sh shy away from New Year's because of all the you know because things do break right I mean and if you don't if you're not interested or willing and willing to put in that investment towards you know 
uh, solving things when things are broken. Because when I first started using Linux, I wasn't really invested in fixing things. When something broke, I just switched to a new distro. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was like, oh, uh, you know, there's a problem with this thing I'm using, so I'm just going to go to Ubuntu or I'm going to go to, you know, uh, you know. Uh, Solus or whatever. Um, so, I, but I don't do that. I think now that I've used Linux more for longer, I'm more interested in solving those problems. But you're definitely right. That is that tr- my distro is better than your distro. And um, what, what's really interesting, though, Martin, is that um, the Arch Linux users can look down on each other <laughs> based on their knowledge, right? So if you have, <laughs> if you've used the Arch Linux for ages, but you still have to ask, ask a question and you didn't happen to go through and look at the Arch wiki, you're in so much trouble because they're obviously going to be um, very condescending about pointing you towards the documentation. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting you m- m- uh, mentioned Manjaro. I've just checked um, distro watch. Manjaro's gone up to number two. So I've got MX Linux number one, Manjaro number two, and Mint, and then Pop OS. So I mean, it's, it, by the uptake to Manjaro, it's, it's, it's getting ever popular, especially to knock Mint off number two. Yeah, it's it been. I I feel like I've, I I saw Manjaro at like number one for a while, like a couple of years oh, ago. Right. Um, oh. but I could be that could be just in my brain. I mean, I could be completely making that up. Um, Maybe it's a case with all the uh, troubles they had internally. It it just dropped down a bit, and well, it's easily forgotten about. That and um, bits and pieces in tech, isn't it? It is. It's not as bloated as Arco. Arco is my favorite uh, Arch-based distro, but Manjaro has a certain aesthetic that kind of I don't know. It, it doesn't appeal to everybody. That green and you know weird stuff, and then it, choosing which desktop environment you want to use. So it's a little bit. I don't know it's not it's not quite as upfront as like uh you know Ubuntu or whatever. Like you, mm. you you download Ubuntu, you're getting Ubuntu. I mean they have different flavors, but if you're a new user and you download something uh, called Kubuntu, you're not really thinking you're downloading Ubuntu. You're thinking you're downloading Kubuntu. You think it's something completely separate. I mean because you change mm. it, you don't know what the difference is. Um, yeah. It's just uh, um, it's, I feel like like some somebody reviewed. A Debian-based version of, uh, or a version of Debian that was running some different init system, some different than system the other day, and they were claiming like they were reviewing it as if uh, some new user was going to come in and and oh, it's, it was called Devon, Devon, something like that, Linux. Um, yeah. But ba- basically, the person who was reviewing it said that uh, you know I'm going to review this as if it's a a, a brand new to Linux users like. Come on, first of all, the discovery on that thing, I mean, you'd have to be really depth in, deep down the rabbit hole of Google to find this minimalistic version of Debian. Uh, s- chances are, if you're a new user, you're not going to find Arch, really. You're gonna, you're not going to find Manjaro. You're going to you're gonna Google what's the best you know, Linux yeah. distro for new users, and yeah, they're going to point you towards Ubuntu or Mint, right? Yeah. So, um, that was completely off topic, but um, so you have you. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I promise I won't look down on you. No, you, carry on. Carry <laughs> on. Have you ever installed like vanilla Arch Linux on a system, Martin? I mean, I think when I started up, I thought, oh, let's have a look at this Arch business. Uh, they seem to be um, far superior according to what's wrote down, and I just thought, sod that, just. <laughs> put something else and I thought I can't be asked going through all that as a new user anyway using the command line yeah we we all say oh don't copy command lines from the internet but you've still got to do it to get started but Arch I just thought no I, I, I'll just stick to the, the um, user friendly um, distros and mm-hmm. type in the odd commands when if and when needed but I could say I'm a, a GUI guy. You're, you're a command line guy, so I definitely am. Yeah, but the, the but the thing is, I, I've installed Arch Linux successfully one time, exactly once, and it was good. It was fun. Uh, it, it made me feel proud of myself. Um, but since then, I've realized that I'm just much too lazy to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. when I have to reinstall on my main computer, I just use Arco or, you know, I'd use Manjaro or some kind of, because I'm always going to be on an Arch-based distro. I 
prefer the AUR. I can't stand PPAs. I can't stand snaps. So I, I, I'm going to use Arch, but I'm going to use an Arch-based distro that has an easy to install, you know, installer. So that's just me being completely lazy. Um, uh, I mean, the Arch user repository. I mean, that's not monitored, is it? No, it's, I could it's, upload it's, anything essentially. I could do a program. Here you go. I mean, obviously, some of the guys will spot it or spot some sort of malicious script and things like that. But I, I'm quite happy with my, my current uh, Debian setup of knowing that that's whatever I'm, if I'm just browsing through or synaptic or whatever. I'm, well, I'm, I, I'm pleased to know that I'm not going to do- download anything that's going to. Malware or damaging or some sort of keylogger. I mean, that, that's, with, with, that's one thing that I yeah. just can't see. The AUR. I, I mean, obviously, it's a superb help to yourself, and God knows how many packages on it, but they've got bloody. I gotta defend my AUR, man. Tens of thousands. Go on then. Uh, defend it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're, you're right about Snaps. Snaps is it comes from a proprietary store. The, the Snap store is proprietary. It's closed source. So they monitor that stuff. But Snaps are fairly new, and a lot of things still come from random PPAs on the internet, and those are not monitored. Those are just just like the AUR. You get those. You go to a website like you're on Windows and find a PPA that you want to install for, of a program, and you know that's those aren't. I mean, that could be just random people too. So I mean, um, yeah, yeah. If you if you come out of uh, if you go on the web, obviously you, you you're going to find some um, some of the may well damage your system. But I, I will usually um, use unless it's a new package that I've read about or mm. heard about. I, I will use. Well, currently I'm using a Discovery on the KDE, uh, but <coughs> I just oh, installed Sin. Sin- yeah, Discovery is bad. I <laughs> yeah, I just don't. I, okay, I, lo- I love Plasma. Plasma is one of my, if, if I didn't use a desktop environment, I would definitely use Plasma. But Discovery is – so in my brief time it's using not Ubuntu the, the other day, I was using the Ubuntu store. and the, It's it's like a, a fork of GNOME Web – GNOME, not GNOME Web, GNOME software. It's gotten so much – it's so good. I mean, it looks like an actual like – you know, It's an actual storefront. Yeah. Uh, and then you know you log into Plasma and the um, Discovery looks like it's been like five or six years ago. It hasn't made any, hardly any changes at all. Um, yeah, I will agree with that. It's not the uh, as visually pleasing as, as everything else to do. I mean, obviously you could drop into your your games, your internet, and things like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'll I'll give it to uh, Gnome and, and various other stores that. Uh, once you load up the store, nice and pretty. Yeah, a couple of um, applications that they the favour at the start, but it, it just overall a, a, a nice seems, experience. Yeah, everyone seems to agree that Elementary OS has the best looking storefront. Um, All right. I have so many problems with Elementary OS. We should do a we should do a, a, a different show on that just so I can rant about how much I hate it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm very very grumpy. Lately, um, um, and well, whilst be. we're on the um, subject of uh, stores, <sighs> with Arch, do you not get sick? I mean, blah blah blah, bleeding edge, this that, and whatever. Do you not get just overwhelmed by the amount of updates that you do get through? No, I just do updates once a week, and I'm good. You just do um, it once a week. Yeah, I'm, I have it set via a uh, cron job. You got to remember, I, I nerd at heart here. And I do things in the yeah. terminal, so I you know I set up a cron job for this thing, and you know it just runs once a week at midnight, and it will update, and then it will restart the computer. It's just a, it's oh, so a little it's, script that I wrote. Um, it's oh, not cool. something that happens so, automatically, but so but. So you've never got anything flashing up. You've got updates. Nope. Things like that. It's all taken care of. Oh, that's not too bad. No, um, see, it's it's not like Ubuntu. Like Ubuntu, like if you don't do the updates, it'll do a little pop up once you know once every once once. Yeah. A month. It's like once a month or something. Like it's not it's not like Windows. Like oh my God, you have an update. I'm restarting your computer. Oh, you're doing something important. I don't care. I'm restarting anyways. Screw yeah. you. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm using Windows. I hate it. Um, I'm sitting here looking. Don't say that because you, you'll have a reboot soon. Yeah, I'm sure I will. It's because I haven't done software updates on this in probably like four or five months it's horrible it's probably screaming at me in the background i'm just trying to ignore it yeah um yeah 
like Arch won't t tell you at all if it, you have updates. You'd actually have, have to go out and install a specific package to warn you about updates. Otherwise, you just do it whenever you want to do it. Um, no. now, now, granted, the longer you wait, the more likely you are to have like conflicting packages or something. Um, so that's the reason why I do it once a week. I'm, you know, and I've been doing that for I've been I've had this install of of Arco, which is just basically Arch, um, for oh probably five months now. Just and I haven't had a single problem. Yeah, I mean, uh, fair play to Arch Arch users. I mean, you carry on testing that software, so when it comes to me, it's nice. And <laughs> I will continue to your guinea pig. Yes. <laughs> yep, you keep testing that software. Uh, yeah, I I will take one for the team. All right, let's <laughs> jump into apps of the week. Martin, your your app of the week. Right, it's an app that um, possibly used most frequently. To be fair, uh, Belina Etcher. Now this is for Windows and uh, Linux. Um, it's an app image, and I use it just like I say, flashing ISOs to USB or my EMS, EMMC module for my Pinebook Pro. Works well. Hides your physical drives to save any mistakes. Um, quite happy with that. Um, whenever I log into, I'll always um, bring up Belina Etcher instead of using the onboard one. Um, that, that's my app of the week, to be fair. Probably one of the main apps I do go to um, for installing ISOs and things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use... Have you ever used Belina at all? When I'm lazy, I will, in fact, do it, yes. I'm not, it's nice, that, that, it's that, nice that, and that, easy, isn't that, it? That probably <laughs> came across as me calling you lazy, Martin. That's not No, right. no, no. That's not what Carry I mean. <laughs> I just meant that um, I prefer just using DD. Um, oh, gosh, no. I, I know oh, it's it, it's dangerous, be. but I, I I live on the edge of insanity, and if you don't risk ruining your entire hard drive every time you want to burn an ISO, what's the fun in living? Oh, no. About four clicks, and I've got my ISO sorted. Thank you. I'll stick to Belina Etcher. But that's uh, my pick. Huh? <laughs> I just How about you yourself? Oh, DD, sorry. IF, DD. the input file, OF, the output file, and then, you know, status equals progress and you're you know you know whatever <laughs> it's just you know all right so my, my pick um i i'm one of those people who like to play at being organized i'm not really organized but i like to find tools that supposedly will help me be organized and call it a day um but i've recently started like i said i've started doing a whole bunch of videos for the the youtube channel and yeah. i've been trying to do some i've <laughs> I originally started out just completely winging those videos. I mean, you probably could tell. Uh, I would just sit there and babble and, and um and ooh and oh my god, and I don't. I lost my place, and it's it was it was <laughs> it was bad. And they're still not good, um, but but they're getting better because I went through and started actually writing some you know t taking notes and making sure I was prepared for these videos beforehand. Yeah. And the tool I've been using to kind of schedule um, videos and make scripts and uh, organize things is, is, a, is an app called Notion. It's a web app. It has native apps for Mac OS and uh, Windows, but it doesn't have an, a native app for Linux. But somebody uh, took an, took the web version and put it in a container, and they called it Lotion. Um, L-O-T-I-O-N. <laughs> Very clever. It's uh, obviously f free. It's not open source because it's just basically it's basically like an electron wrapper over a proprietary piece of software. Um, yeah. But there's some there. I mean, I couldn't even go through and tell you all the things that Notion can do. You know, it can do tables and and uh, databases and you know um, all sorts of things. It's kind of like a, a very souped up version of like um, Evernote or something. But you know, it does so much more. It's kind of awesome and it's also uh, free to use. I mean, you can go through and you. Um, Use it as much as you want. They used to limit you to like a thousand notes or whatever, but now it's completely oh. unlimited. So um, oh, I'm actually cool. thinking about pointing us towards using it for the show notes because it's yeah. really awesome and it allows us to kind of put them all in one place. But we'll talk about that later. Um, we'll would see. you be able to? Sorry, would you be able to link that to your Android phone? Yeah, it has a it has a Notion would has be. an Android app. Yep. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a fairly good Android app because it just uses it does everything. The um, desktop app would do. So yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, I've got a joke for you, actually. All right, I'm up for that. 
How do you know that a person is an Arch Linux user? Mm, I'm not sure. He will tell, he will tell you about it. <laughs> that's, <Yeah. laughs> yeah, that's, that's 100% true. I definitely use Arch, by the way. <laughs> 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 I, I should. I need a t. Sh I need a t-shirt and a mug. You know. I. I. You know. You. You can't use Arch without a t-shirt and a mug. So I'm gonna have to do that. Anyways, that is it for us uh, this week. Uh, what is our topic for next week? I'm not even sure. Next week. I think it, Linux hardware. Um, laptops. Yeah, we're gonna talk about System76 and uh, mm. hard soft hardware vendors. Cool. Um. That should be fun. Um, we, we, we will both talk about uh, hardware that neither of us can afford. <laughs> yep, that's what I was just thinking, actually. <laughs> uh, like, neither one of us have ever had a seven, System76 device, I'm pretty sure, because they're like $3,000. Like, when I was looking for a new computer, you know, I was like, I I'd like a System76, and then I went through and built one. I was like, holy, yeah. I can't afford that. Horrible. No, anyway, so... Definitely that, nice. Oh they're, oh, they're awesome. I just way too expensive anyways mm. we'll talk about that in much more detail next week and uh we'll see you then thanks for watching excellent cheers bye bye then.